Between Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse, we have seen some fantastic interpretations and versions of the Spider-Man character, which I never thought we would see on the big screen, like Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham, and Spider-Punk, and even some versions that I never thought we would see again, like Spider-Man from the 60s show and Spectacular Spider-Man. However, there are still some key Spider-People we haven't yet seen in these films, and with Beyond the Spider-Verse supposedly coming out next year, here are my top five versions of Spider-Man I would like to see in Beyond the Spider-Verse. Hello and welcome to Cinemaze. Now Beyond the Spider-Verse is the next movie in the Spider-Verse franchise, continuing on from the cliffhanger ending of Across the Spider-Verse, and it provides the opportunity to give us some even more fun and unique cameos of different Spider-People. We've seen some great ones so far, but there's still some important ones I would like to see turn up in the future. How they turn up, I don't quite know, but even that title, Beyond the Spider-Verse, barks the idea of a lot of possibilities. So let's get right into the top five Spider-Men I'd like to see appear in Beyond the Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Number 5 Superior Spider-Man. First up I'd like to see the Superior Spider-Man. This is a version of Spider-Man from the main comics where Dr. Octopus takes over the body of Peter Parker and tries to be a Superior Spider-Man. It's one of the most well regarded modern Spidey comics and I think it's an interesting take on the character. Where Across the Spider-Verse takes a typically heroic version of Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2099 and makes him more antagonistic, I think it would be interesting to contrast this by taking a typically more antagonistic version of Spider-Man and having him side with our heroes. I assume a large part of Beyond the Spider-Verse is going to be challenging the idea of canon events, and I think it'd be cool to get Dr. Octopus's Spider-Man's take on canon events, coming from a very analytical mind and a version of Spider-Man trying to do the right thing, but from a person where it doesn't necessarily come as naturally to them. As well as having a unique concept behind the character, he also has an awesome costume, which I'd love to see in these movies, which could contrast the classic Peter Parker costume very nicely. He's been in the Spider-Verse events in the comics, always adding an interesting dynamic to the teams, and so it would make sense for him to appear in a Spider-Verse film. Potentially, he was seen in the background of Across the Spider-Verse, but I'd like to see him have a larger role outside of the Spider-Society. Number four alternative miles. Across these movies we've seen loads of versions of Spider-Man who are Peter Parker and even one version of Peter Parker who isn't Spider-Man but we've only seen one version of Miles who is Spider-Man. And this makes sense, Peter Parker is the most known version of the character and Miles is the main character and so we keep the focus on the main character by only having one version of him. However, this changes by the end of Across the Spider-Verse where we meet our first alternative version of Miles Morales. But what's interesting about this version is that he is not Spider-Man. But based on what we see in the film and behind the scenes information, he is actually a good guy. He's a vigilante who's trying to be a superhero despite not having any powers. I assume the direction beyond the Spider-Verse is going to go is that Miles and his team are going to disprove canon events, proving that they can be altered and are not fixed. With the inclusion of the vigilante Miles G. Morales, the other direction I think the movie is going to go is that Miles is meant to be Spider-Man, that he is meant to be a hero, because even in the universe where he doesn't get bitten, he still tries to be a hero. And so the alternative version of Miles is going to tie into our main Miles' journey and the idea of canon events by showing that their destinies are not predetermined but instead can be altered based on their own actions. Now once this arc is resolved, once Miles befriends his vigilante self and realises he is meant to be a hero, then I think it would be fun to allow Miles to start meeting alternative versions of himself who are Spider-Man, to show that he is meant to be Spider-Man and that he isn't alone in the multiverse. And then I think we can have some fun with it in the same way that we have fun with all the alternative versions of Peter Parker. Now it could be an alternative version of Miles that we recognise. The most notable of these would be Miles from the current Insomniac PlayStation games. We've already seen Peter from these games appear in the films and so Miles could be the next step. But I don't see this one happening because the games are still ongoing and they don't really want to touch the multiverse. I think another fun version would be Miles from the Ultimate Spider-Man TV show. We've seen Spider-Man from other cartoons appear like the 1960s series, Spider-Man Unlimited and of course Spectacular Spider-Man and so it could be cool to reference the Ultimate Spider-Man TV show as well. There is some controversy surrounding the actor of that show's Peter Parker, so instead we could reference that show through Miles. And another reason this would be fun is because Miles in that show was originally voiced by Donald Glover, who we saw appear as the Prowler in Across the Spider-Verse and briefly in the MCU. Now Donald Glover has a long history with the Miles character, and so it could be cool to see him finally get to voice the character in a film by allowing him to return to this role. Or we could get an original take on Miles, a new version of the character created specifically for this film, like an older version of Miles as we normally only 
ever see him young. Either way, I don't think it matters what version of Miles we see, but I think it would tie into the story nicely to see an alternative version of Miles as Spidey once Miles has accepted his destiny as Spider-Man. Number three, comic book Spider-Man. The Spider-Verse films pay tribute to Spider-Man across all media, whether that's films, video games, or TV shows, and there are of course loads of Spider-Man variants inspired by the comics. But what if we got a version of Spider-Man that is from the comics? What if we got Peter Parker from the 616 mainline comic universe? If we are really celebrating Spider-Man history with these films, I think it would be an incredible way to honor the character. Now, this would of course raise some important questions. Firstly, what would he look like Spidey's been around for 60 years and his design has changed considerably over that time. Of course, it would make the most sense for him to look like the modern day current version of Spider-Man in the comics because this way it would line up with the continuity of the film. However, the current comic run is not a particular popular one with the fans and it isn't the most recognizable style to the public. I've also seen the suggestion that if this character were to appear, it could be cool if his art style constantly changed to represent all the different eras of the character, switching between the iconic styles like Steve Ditko, Alex Ross and Todd McFarlane. And I could see this this work and it does seem like the type of thing these movies could pull off but I could also see it being a bit weird and confusing so if that idea didn't work and you had to choose an art style I think John Romita Sr. would be the artist to go with. He's the artist who took over after Steve Ditko in the late 60s and early 70s. And I think he is the most recognizable Spider-Man artist, drawing comics like the first appearance of Mary Jane and Spider-Man No More, some of the most famous Spider-Man iconography and comic panels. And of course, if he were to appear, it would also have the question of what would he sound like? Who would voice this character? Because this version of Spider-Man has never had a voice and it's always been what the reader hears in their head. But that's actually the answer to this question. He shouldn't have a voice. He should speak in the same way he speaks in the comics through speech bubbles. The Spider-Verse movies are no stranger to having words appear on the screen. And so I think it could work to have Spider-Man from the comic universe appear in the movie and talk in speech bubbles honoring this iconic character's origins. Number two, live action Spider-Man. If what these movies aim to do is on a previous version of Spider-Man, then a live action appearance from one of our Spider-Men feels inevitable. For a movie called Beyond the Spider-Verse, it makes sense to do a cameo that goes beyond the realms of animation. And all of the groundwork for a cameo cameo like this has already been laid. We've introduced the idea of alternate Peters, we've had the Spider-Men meet in live action in No Way Home, we've established that live action universes exist with the spot travelling to the Venomverse, Across the Spider-Verse shows the existence of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's universes, and we showed that live action characters can exist in animation with Donald Glover's Prowler. Therefore, all the steps have been taken to set up an appearance from our live action Spider-Men. Really, it would be awesome if we could see all three of these actors again together. But I think Tom Holland is unlikely because his movies are still ongoing and they might might not want to affect their plans there. But it would be very easy for Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire to appear again. Maybe they got lost on their way home through the multiverse in No Way Home and we can meet them traveling through the multiverse in Beyond the Spider-Verse. It feels like such an easy way to bring these actors back in a way that feels natural and in a way that fans will enjoy and in a way that makes sense for a movie called Beyond the Spider-Verse. Number one, Spider-Man 94. The Spider-Man I want to appear more than any other Spider-Man is Spider-Man from the 1994 animated series. This is both a Spider-Man that I personally have an attachment to and has a logical reason for actually showing up in the next film. Starting with my personal connection to this character, this is definitely in my top three versions of Peter Parker across all media. This is the voice that I hear when I read a Spider-Man comic. Come down here and fight like a man. I don't suppose I could convince you to come up here and fight like a spider. And so it would be great to honor the actor Christopher Daniel Barnes who really brought this character to life by letting him appear one more time. Much like Spectacular Spider-Man, this show was canceled without a complete ending and so it would make me and many fans extremely satisfied to see this character again. But not only is this one of my favorite versions of the character, this gets to my number one spot because it actually makes sense for this character to appear in a Spider-Verse movie. As I've mentioned in this video, much of the Spider-Verse films are about honoring previous versions of the character and the character's history. And what better Spider-Man to honor than the Spider-Man who debuted the Spider-Verse. That's right, in Spider-Man the Animated Series, we see Spider-Man interact with multiple alternative versions of himself for the first time. And while not named as the Spider-Verse, this show was the first time we ever saw the idea of a Spider-Verse in any media. And so if we want to honor Spider-Man history using the Spider-Verse, we really should honor 
one other character who paved the way for the Spider-Verse. Not only that, but this version of Spider-Man has very famously fought the Spot, who is of course a major villain in Across the Spider-Verse. And it was really this show that made the Spot a bit more famous, taking him from a very unknown jokey villain to a more of an integral character. And in that show, it's the Spot's powers which leads to creating a multiverse traveling device. And so it really does tie into where Beyond the Spider-Verse may be heading. And where I mentioned that this show was canceled without a complete ending, it's actually this multiverse traveling device which ties into the show's cliffhanger, where Mary Jane falls through a portal to another dimension, and Spider-Man vows to travel the multiverse to find her. Unfortunately, the show was then canceled and we never got the CP to find MJ. Therefore, Beyond the Spider-Verse could give us the opportunity to reunite with this version of Peter, who we already know is traveling the multiverse. Now, the film could be used to show us this version of Peter finally finding MJ in the multiverse, or since we last saw him, he might have already found MJ and now he's trying to get home. I don't think it matters how he's in the film, but I think it's a really good opportunity to finish off this massive cliffhanger in a way that makes sense for both Beyond the Spider-Verse and the original 94 series. So not only is this version of Spider-Man one of my favorite versions and is one of the most iconic versions of the character, he has already battled the spot, he debuted the Spider-Verse, he traveled the multiverse, it makes so much sense for him to appear in Beyond the Spider-Verse, tying into already established ideas like the spot and the history of Spider-Man, and it gives a fantastic chance to finish off a cliffhanger 30 years in the making. Because of all of this, Spider-Man from the 1994 animated series comes in as my number one Spidey I'd like to see in Beyond the Spider-Verse. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is only my top five. There's still loads of other versions of the character I would like to see appear like Japanese Spider-Man, Silk, Spider-Boy from the Marvel DC Amalgam Universe and the Mayday version of Spider-Woman. But let me know in the comments who you'd like to see appear in Beyond the Spider-Verse. If you enjoyed this, please like the video. It helps me out so much and subscribe for more videos like this. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.